the Dark Knight trilogy, one of the most famous Batman trilogies, or hell, one of the most famous trilogies in movie history. Christopher Nolan's take on a realistic Batman universe is still highly acclaimed 10 years later. One of the biggest things that people remember about these movies are its uh, line of villains. Joker, Bane, Ra's al Ghul, Scarecrow, I don't know, Two-Face maybe? All those villains are so well cast, well written, and somewhat like the actual characters. Makes me wonder though, after rewatching those movies again recently, why weren't other villains chosen to be in this roster? I mean, think about it. There are a lot of Batman villains that could potentially work in real life, and that's what this video is here to talk about. I want to talk about which Batman villain could work in real life. And there are a few. Not all of them, but a few. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. I'm only going to be including the human villains, like Riddler, Penguin and all that. So no Mr. Freezes or Clayfaces on the list because, well, you know, they're just not exactly human anymore. I mean, Mr. Freeze might be human, but still, he's not on the list. And we're going to be taking these characters, reworking them a bit to work in real life. So without further ado, let's get started. Who the hell are you? Just a friend. But you can call me... The Riddler. Now, you may think the Riddler may be a bit too campy for the Dark Knight trilogy. Well, yes. But also no. There have been serious takes on the Riddler before. Matt Reeves' The Batman is a good example. That Riddler feels like it could work in live action, but we're not talking about that right now, because that came out years after the Dark Knight trilogy, so we're going to be focusing on that. Now, the Riddler, yeah, he can be depicted as an absolute goofy goon, but in some cases, he can be overly serious, with a need to leave behind a trail of breadcrumbs leading back to him. As for his design, well, I'd give him a dark green suit with a black bowler hat. I'd tone it down on the question marks a bit, you know, maybe give him some nice glasses, maybe a normal cane. You know, trying to work with what I got here. Perhaps the bowler hat's a little too much, but hey, come on. Now, what would the Riddler's main motives be? Well, I'd make him a former worker of a company. Then he gets fired, he goes crazy, and he starts leaving riddles after every time he murders someone. Or after every thing he destroys, whatever. Overall though, every time he does something, leaves behind a riddle. Overall, yeah, I think my little description could make the Riddler work in the Dark Knight trilogy. What's your name again? Everyone here calls me Penguin, sir. This is an interesting one. Honestly, I don't know why Penguin didn't make it into the Dark Knight trilogy. Like, he seems like a character that would fit in it pretty well. But yeah, he never made it. Now, let's talk about how Penguin would necessarily work. There haven't been many live action takes on the Penguin. Like, there was Burgess Meredith in the 1960s TV show, and then there was Danny DeVito in Batman Returns, both of which are, well, not exactly realistic. And in the case of Robin Lord Taylor and Carl Farrell, who came out after this trilogy completed? Yeah. Well, I mean... Uh-huh. Enough said. Just, just that. Let's talk about Penguin's design. Obviously, I would make him wear a suit. Like, I'd make him a short, fat guy in a suit. Maybe a top hat on occasion, or a fedora, pretty much. He'd have his umbrella, though. Like, make it a gun umbrella. Yeah, a gun and hint on an umbrella. That would work. I'd give him an exaggerated, like, beak nose, like the penguin's known to have. Oh, and he would definitely own a, the Iceberg Casino. As for the penguin's motives, well, let's just say he's a mob boss that Batman's looking to take down. Like, maybe a side character to our main plot of the movie. Like, if the Dark Knight ever got a fourth movie and Penguin was a character in it. Sort of the Batman kind of way, if you will. Penguin is definitely a threat. And honestly? Should have made it into this movie. It's like, how did he not make it in these movies? Come on, guys. Knock, knock, Puddin. Say hello to your new, improved Harley Quinn. Now, it might seem laughable that Harley Quinn would end up in these movies. Considering that Heath Ledger is no longer around, it seems impossible that she ever could end up in these movies after The Dark Knight. However, I don't think that doesn't mean she can't appear. Like, there have been times that Harley Quinn has acted on her own without the Joker before. Like, take the 2002 Birds of Prey TV show, 
when Harley was basically the main antagonist of that show. She acted without the Joker, and she was still as crazy as, you know, Harley Gwen. Just not clown crazy, if that makes any sense. But anyway, how would Harley work? Okay, let's start with the design. I'd probably give her like a black outfit with red hair, maybe over the top. Maybe black hair with red outfit. Maybe a bit of both, you know. I would maybe make her act like she does in Birds of Prey. Like, yeah, just overall, take the Birds of Prey route. Because that Harley could work in live action. And I'm not talking about how she turns into a meta human by the end of the show. I'm talking about the early version of Harley Quinn, where she basically just acted like human. Let's say the Dark Knight had a post credit scene when Joker and Harley Quinn were talking, and then Joker was convincing Harley Quinn to turn to the dark side, like, you know, he always does. Then in, like, a sequel to The Dark Knight, when Joker never appears again, because, you know, obvious reasons, Harley Quinn could be out for revenge, trying to find Batman, get revenge on him for putting the Joker away. Honestly, I don't know if the Joker is dead in canon. I mean, he might be, or he might be in prison still for the rest of his life. Overall, though, I think Harley Quinn might work in this universe if they took the Birds of Prey route. Because the Birds of Prey Harley Quinn feels like a real person. Like a real insane person that you would normally find in real life. Yeah, I've got a problem. And you are absolutely the man who possesses the gifts to take care of this problem. Man, I thought Penguin not appearing in these movies was crazy. Just how did Black Mask not appear in these films? Like, come on, guys. Black Mask. Black f***ing Mask should have appeared in the Dark Knight trilogy. I mean, how real do you need this guy to be to fit in your world? He's a mob boss. Connections. Pretty much rules all of Gotham City. Like, what more do you need? That's recipe for a real-life character. All right, but seriously. Black Mask should have appeared in these movies. He should have. I don't know how. I don't know why he didn't. But he should have been in them. I don't even need to talk about how this guy could fit in real life. Because he already fits in real life. Like, okay. Design-wise, he's a guy in a suit with a black skeleton-like mask. Like, that's all you really need for a design. And it's what we would eventually get in the Birds of Prey movie. As of his motives, well, he's this big crime boss, rules half of Gotham City, uh, but Batman keeps foiling his plots and bank robberies or whatever the hell he does. And Black Mask gets pissed and makes it his main motive to kill the Batman. That's pretty much all you need. I know it sounds like I have nothing to do with this segment, because I really don't. I don't need to explain anything for Black Mask to work in this trilogy. What I just said is all you need to know. He should have been in these movies, guys. He really should have been in these movies. Looks like you got my invitation. Just you and me. Okay, I know this is the third time I've said this already, but it's because the characters I'm mentioning really should have been in these movies. They could work in real life, and they should have been in the Dark Knight Trilogy. Deathstroke. Oh, Deathstroke. How? How did you not make it, my guy? You are just, like, come on. Why? Just why? All right, enough moaning. Deathstroke is a character that could really work in the Dark Knight Trilogy. From his design, to his character, to his relationship with Batman and Bruce Wayne, really. This could have been a good character to add, and yet they didn't. Let's start with his design. Yeah, that sums it up. I don't really need to change anything. That, the design just speaks for itself. As for his motives, he blames Batman for the death of his son and starts making his life a living hell. He starts destroying parts of Gotham City, starts killing people that he loves, and it would eventually come to a final showdown where it would choose between the death of Batman and the death of Deathstroke. Batman does get the upper hand, but he doesn't kill Deathstroke because of his one rule of no killing. Now that, I like. How Deathstroke didn't appear in these movies, I don't know. You don't need to change anything, he's just there. Deathstroke is just there, and he chose not to use him. <sighs> wow. What well do we live in? 
there you have it guys. Those were Batman villains I think could have worked in the Dark Knight trilogy. Now this was an idea I've had for, well, months now. And I've only started making it. And this was fun to make. Now, if you guys think I should do a video on what Batman villain should have appeared in the Burton X Schumacher movies, then let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!